Hello and welcome to another day at the Elemental Workshop. We're starting off this video at a local pond near my house because we're going to be gathering some stuff to make an enclosed ecosystem. You may have seen similar videos on other YouTube channels, and I personally was inspired to do this project by a series of videos that I recently saw Atomic Shrimp do. Uh, his videos are going to be linked down in the description, and you can check those out there. I'm going to quickly gather about a gallon of water and a couple different plants, and then I'll take it all home to get everything set up. All right, now that I brought it back home, I'm going to add all the water and plants to this jar. And then I'm just going to take some plastic wrap and seal it off here at the top to hopefully make a completely enclosed ecosystem. Okay, well, I've let everything sit for a few hours, and we can already see that the water has cleared up quite a bit. The largest animal life in our ecosystem by far are the bladder snails that we can see easily with an unaided eye moving around on the inside of the glass and plants. But there's also a ton of these tiny little dots moving around in the water, which I'm pretty sure are tiny crustaceans. We'll have to grab the microscope out later and see. I waited a couple days for everything to get settled down, and now, with the aid of the microscope, we can go explore everything in much more detail. With the aid of the microscope, we can now clearly see that these are indeed tiny little crustaceans. The most abundant by far in this ecosystem are the ostracods, commonly known as seed shrimp. These tiny little crustaceans have two hard outer shells covering both hemispheres of their body, making them very resilient and protecting them from most predators. Although much less common than the ostracods, I did manage to find a couple copy pods clinging to the surface of the glass. Although in my opinion they look much more interesting than the ostracods, they didn't really move around or do anything so they didn't get much screen time here. There are also plenty of tiny little flatworms moving around on the surface of the glass. The largest of these are the planarium worms, and I found them incredibly interesting to watch. As you can see, they have two primitive eyes near the front of their body that gives them a quite comical look as they're swimming around. Along with our friendly little planarian worm, I was also able to capture some footage of what I believe is a tube effects worm moving around here. Through the microscope with the light shining behind it, you can actually see its digestive tract move as it processes food and pushes it through its body. On the first day of observing the jar, I came across this cluster of eggs near the surface of the water. I was very excited at first as I thought these might be tiny minnow eggs that we gathered along with the duckweed, but it turns out that these are actually tiny little bladder snail eggs. A few days later, I was able to capture one of these newly born bladder snails moving around on the surface of the glass. To this tiny little guy, this jar is his entire world. The larger snails were much more difficult to capture on camera, as by the time I had gotten the camera in place and in focus, they would have moved out of frame already. 
However, I was able to capture some good footage of the snails, such as this bladder snail eating at the bottom of the jar. I was also able to capture this footage of a small bladder snail, and I find this shot particularly interesting as you can see its heart actually beating with the light shining through its shell behind it. Along the way I came across a couple little guys that I wasn't quite sure the identifications for, like this little guy moving around below this copy pod, but I thought I'd include the footage anyways. I'm not sure at all what this guy is, but he might be a little rotifer moving around on the surface of the glass. Whatever it is, that flatworm did not look like it enjoyed its encounter with it. While processing some of the footage, I realized that this shot actually contained a tiny bit of floating plankton up in the top. I'm surprised that my cheap microscope was able to capture this at all due to the tiny size of most phytoplankton. All the life in our ecosystem has been exciting to watch, but for me by far the most interesting are our predators. At first these may just look like tiny little plants clinging to the surface of the jar, but in fact these are hydras, the tiny little cousins of the sea anemone. Its tendrils are covered in tiny little nematocysts which inject unsuspecting prey with paralyzing venom and then drag the prey towards the hydra's mouth. If the prey does manage to get away, such as this lucky ostracod, then the hydra will use its tentacles to reposition itself and wait for more prey to come along. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe for more science related videos. See you next time.